New details tonight in a CBS 46 exclusive. They are the alleged victims of a fraud and exploitation at a Lawrenceville nonprofit. But the residents at Wishes For Me also say they feel like they're the victims of the state's investigation, which has left them without access to the resources they desperately need to survive. Our Adam Murphy reports. I was there by her bedside when she passed. For Eric Dudley, the death of his mother was the catalyst for a series of life changes. It was very emotional for me whenever I lost her because I knew then I did not have a place to go. That's when he found Wishes for Me, a nonprofit based in Lawrenceville, which helps adults with physical or mental disabilities lead more independent lives. It's been an answer to a prayer for, for many prayers. Residents like Eric and like Charlotte Mayo's two adult children live in one of the organization's six homes and have access to caregivers and a built-in support system. We've become, all of us, like a big family here where we really love and care about each other. But that all changed last week when the organization's founder, Jennifer Lynn Robinette, was indicted on charges of Medicaid fraud, racketeering, forgery, and exploitation of the adults that were in her care. They came in, knocked on the door like that, waved and was like, we're here from the state. The state agencies that were here you know, communicated to caregivers that not to come back here, uh, that they would send in people to help. And that was on a Thursday. And uh, I was here Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No one has been, no one came. The days that followed have been chaotic, to say the least, for those left behind at Wishes for Me. Not only have they been left without caregivers, their accounts have been frozen due to the investigation. And the staff says they have not been able to buy things like groceries, toiletries, or even gas for their wheelchair accessible vans that drive residents to and from appointments. They took all the documents, uh, including uh, medication schedule, which they were left without a schedule for the medications for the residents. It could be years before Robinette's case works its way through the courts. And that's time that residents don't have. It shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened this way. Adam Murphy, CBS 46 News. Now residents and staff at Wishes for Me aren't sure when they'll regain access to their bank accounts or their medical records and information. If you want to help the residents by donating household items, we're going to have more information on our website. For that, just go to CBS46.com.